the eighth property is multiplication in time i will first give you the property and then we will prove it let's say there is one signal x1t and it is having the fourier coefficient c1n there is another signal x2t and it is having the fourier coefficient c2n and now if we multiply the two signals x1t multiplied to x2t in this scenario the coefficients c1n and c2n will get convoluted so this is the multiplication in time property and now we will see its proof for this i will change the coefficients let's say signal x1t is having the coefficient cn and signal x2t is having the coefficient bn and we know the fourier series expansion of signal x1t is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity coefficient cn multiplied to e power jn omega naught t this is how we write the complex exponential fourier series expansion now in place of n if we write k things will remain same so we will replace n by k this will help us get the desired result so summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity c k multiplied to e power j k omega naught t in the same way we can write the complex exponential Fourier series expansion of signal x to t in place of n I will write m like we replaced n by k here we will replace n by m so m equal to minus infinity to infinity coefficient bm multiplied to e power jm omega naught t and you can see we are multiplying the two signals so we will multiply signal x1 t and signal x2 t on the right hand side we will have summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity c k e power j k omega naught t multiplied to summation m equal to minus infinity to infinity b m e power j m omega naught t or we can write summation m equal to minus infinity to infinity summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity c k b m e power j m plus k omega naught t we have added the powers in the exponential and now we will assume that m plus k m plus k is equal to n this implies m is equal to n minus k and if m is tending to minus infinity it is very clear that n will also tend to minus infinity if we have minus infinity here n will also be equal to minus infinity similarly if m is tending to infinity n will also tend to infinity so in this way we can change the range of summation in this first summation and we can write we can write x1t multiplied to x2t equal to summation n equal to minus infinity because when m approaches to minus infinity n is also approaching to minus infinity so n equal to minus infinity to infinity and then we have summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity c k in place of b m we can write b n minus k because m is equal to n minus k e power j n omega naught t now compare this with the standard formula of complex exponential Fourier series expansion and you will find summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity c k b n minus k is equal to the complex exponential Fourier coefficient. So this is the coefficient of signal x1 t multiplied to signal x2 t x1 t multiplied to x2 t 
is having the coefficient equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity ck bn minus k. So this is very clear now. If we multiply x1t and x2t, we will get the coefficient which is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity ck b and minus k. And this is nothing but the convolution of discrete signals. And the signals are Cn and Bn. So we are having the convolution of two signals, Cn and Bn, and they are they are the coefficient of x1t and coefficient of x2t. So in this way we have easily proved the multiplication in time property of Fourier series expansion. And if you have any doubt regarding the proof, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.